welcome to this third of three videos uh, with Jason Harwin, former uh, senior UK police officer. Jason, thank you so much for filming with welcome. Police Policing TV. We're going to walk around uh, Barnsley Market here in this third um, video, and we are going to have a look at a Barnsley chop, yes. a, a, a famous local delicacy, uh, in a moment or two. But let's just as we're going through Barnsley Market here, um, just reflect on some of the uh, the delights that we have. Um, in fact, I'm just going to backtrack here because um, there is a Charles III post box already there is. Uh, in production. So again, it's quite timely, Bernard, because actually last week saw the over 700 years anniversary of, of, the, of the market. And whilst it wasn't necessarily in this exact location, there's always been a market in Barnsley uh, for that time. And, it, and again, it is a really important part for the, for the town. As you can see, even on, on a Monday, it's, it's all very busy. You come here at a weekend, it's absolutely jam-packed. But importantly for, for the local residents, you can get all sorts of things, as we've just seen from your footage. So yeah, really important. And I come here for my local meet as well. So. So we'll go to uh, a butcher's in a second or two, take a look at a Barnsley chop. But we're not here to talk about Barnsley chops, <laughs> not on this occasion, really. We're here, tell us about uh, um, a little bit more about the police career that you've been following since you've handed in your warrant card. Yeah, so, so uh, the very fortunate position I mean, I mean, finished my career um, is that I can continue to get involved in things that I firstly hopefully add value in, but ultimately things that I think are still important in terms of keeping community safe. I am a strong believer that you, that public service um, ethos doesn't, doesn't go when you leave the police service. So since, since I finished, um, two other areas of work I've been involved in is around um, the work uh, for digital, digital transformation. So as, as the Deputy Chief, I had responsibility for the information systems uh, team, um, and I certainly saw in my time doing that work that obviously we're bringing new technology in some of the legacy issues that we're facing forces what was, was a real challenge but the reality is we didn't necessarily get the real benefit of all the, all the technology that we had and so since I've finished policing I work with a, an organization called Exception that are based in Scotland that are working with policing again just to make sure as a, as a service we get the real benefit of adopting the new technology but at the same time making sure we get about the best out of the technology we've already got um, again, you see very often you make new stuff in, then you move on to the next thing and on to something else, and actually you've not made sure you've embedded the changes, you've not made sure that it's working for the needs of the officer, and therefore you're not squeezing out all the benefits that that system and, and the ways of work can bring to well. So working with those to, to again to improve policing understanding, again in learning what's sh sharing, because you look outside policing, lots of organisations, big organisations are going through significant change with technology and not really getting the benefit, but actually when you work with them, you can see how you can do that to get the benefits for the systems as well. So working with them, also working with the College of Policing, I believe. Yeah, so the College of Policing, I'm an associate with the College of Policing, so not just in terms of selection uh, of, of new senior officers, but also in terms of organisational uh, improvement. So again, some of the work we've just been asked to be involved in now is the what works. Again, HMIC are picking up on evidence of what is working in forces to, to make it better for public and for local communities. But what we're not going to get is sharing that practice, making sure that other forces can see it, get access to it, and are considering in their responses to the issues. Because, as, as I said many times, policing is, you've got to in the country, policing is not that different. It, it might sound different, it may look a little bit different, but actually policing, what we're here to do, is, is not that different. And again, it's really important we share that practice. So let's look at some of the challenges ahead, and now and ahead, for forces uh, globally uh, that reflect that policing shares a common bond, common route across really pretty much the whole of the world. It, policing international, and the reality is whilst policing is still important locally, local policing is really important to local communities around neighbour policing, local and local needs, but actually as we know policing is international. When you look at, when you look at serious and organised crime, that doesn't have any boundaries. Um, obviously we're competing with the... Uh, well, smiling, <laughs> we're competing here because, uh, smiling, we, we, uh, let's drop in at this point the Barnsley <laughs> chop, uh, because the, uh, the butchers, Barker's the butchers just uh, behind you there, very kindly uh, allowed us to film a little earlier on a Barnsley chop, and I think they're chopping it for your lunch yes. or our lunch uh, <laughs> just at the moment. Sorry, I interrupted no, no, you. It's fine. So, 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 this, so this is the important bit for me, it's, not, it's international, so again, it's got, you've got to work across policing, it can't just be working in one area, you've got to work across policing to really address the, the real issues around serious and organised crime. I think the second one for me goes back to that local. It's about the importance of local partnerships. 
about how you work with local councils, how do you work with local country sectors, all the bits that actually add the value to policing. And I think that's a real challenge because that's about relationships. I think the third one for me links into all that about public interface with, with policing. Again, actually, as we know very well, if you have a bad experience, you like to tell lots of people. If you have a good experience, you're less likely to tell people. And again, that's a real issue in terms of policing confidence and, and trust in policing at the same time. And then the fourth one for me goes back to about that, where do we need to invest? Let's be honest, we've got a very inexperienced workforce now, lots of energy, lots of capability, lots of future uh, chief officers and, and future leaders, but it's still very inexperienced in terms of policing. It's how we get that, that, that inexperience up to a level where we can provide that real world-class service that the Policing UK wants to deliver as well. Several issues there, not just for the UK, but uh, for policing globally. Uh, it seems that we're going to be competing against the, the butcher's knife for a while uh, now. So this may be a suitable point, Jason, for us to conclude our conversation for the moment, uh, to recognise that the, uh, the butcher has won on this occasion. And uh, for me to thank you so much for your insights over these last three videos. Uh, on policing, on your career, uh, and the drugs challenges and more uh, that society faces. But for the moment, uh, Jason Harbin, KPM, thank you so much for filming this with Policing TV. No, thank you. Thank you.